Welcome to Put a Word on It, a podcast presented by Men of Valor. In each episode, we're going to talk with a different man, but each one with a unique journey from brokenness to freedom. I'm your host, Rudy Kalis. I spent over 40 years as a TV sportscaster, then retired and joined the Men of Valor program as a volunteer. So join the conversation. Reconciling men to God, their families and society. Welcome to another edition of Put a Word on It, brought to you by Southwestern Investment Group, wonderful people that have helped us a great deal in their support of Meta Valor. This is an interesting time for us, in particular because it is season two of Put a Word on It. And with that in mind, we went back to a man that we talked to, the very first interview we did with staff member A.C. Charles. This is now a year later. Men of Valor has made a tremendous change and he's involved with ACT where they're moving their facility or a facility to Knoxville. That's a part of his life. He's going to direct that, but there's been a much deeper element that has come into his life that he's going to tell us about. AC Season 2, did you ever really think a year ago when we started this that you would be going to Knoxville with Men of Valor? Absolutely not. But then it transpired into an opportunity that really manifested itself. And then they say, well, this is really going to happen, AC. Would you like to go? I said, well, let me pray and talk to my wife about it. So that's what we did. I talked with my wife. We prayed about it. And uh, we really want our marriage to be a ministry to everyone we come in contact with. That We want them to see the glory of the Lord and how it works in a marriage. And so my wife has always really been a great support to me. So she was all for going down to Knoxville and doing something different. And so um, we're excited about an opportunity to be able to bring uh, a transitional facility to Knoxville because of the rate that men return to prison in Knoxville is really high. And so they need a ministry like ours down there. And who better than to take a ministry down there than the ministry of Jesus Christ through Men of Valor? How many prisons are in that area? There's three prisons, and then there's one uh, big facility that we're hoping to be able to receive men from. And you get to set the spirit for that. Yes, it's, it's going to be a, a replication of what we have here. Um, I'm sure 90% of it will probably be a few tweaks. But for the most part, we're going to replicate Menavala down there in Knoxville. Everywhere I go, people that I tell that I'm a volunteer for them, oh, we heard of it. We know about it. The guy's in prison. They know about it. What, what is it about this ministry? About four years ago, our um, executive director, Raul Lopez, had us pray the prayer of Jabaz, you know, to increase our territory. And we're seeing that manifest here at Menavala right now. And I mean... We feel that as long as Jesus is leading, we're going to follow. So we're not trying to um, move at a pace that we want to move at. We want to move at the pace that Jesus is having us move at. But now I've learned to just be obedient, slow down, trust the Lord, and see which direction he's going to take me. So when I do that, I see how he manifests himself. And he actually gives me an opportunity to kind of look back and say, see, See what happens when you wait on me? How important were the tough years in your life? The difficulties that you had to go through, how important were they in building you? I think uh, as I look back where the Lord has me at now, Rudy, I really believe the things that happened to me in my past has actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. I know that he will make all things work together for his good. So I just see all the experiences that I've had in life him glorifying himself through that because I believe he has me in the right place at the right time. I believe that this ministry is in his sweet spot right now. And I just get to be a part of it. I'm just doing my role. He's using how he's gifted me uh, in collaboration with every other staff member that's here that's gifted. And he just brings it together so uniquely. I don't think any of us like pain. Does pain play a role in our lives? Is, can God use that? Yes, um, he can. Um, he can use it mightily. Um, I learned a long time ago that there's two different types of pain that we experience. One is the pain of regret and one is the pain of self-discipline. So I choose the pain of self-discipline and not the pain of regret. And what I mean by that is I have learned to submit. I have learned to 
daily trust the Lord and submit to his will and his way. Uh, the pain that has came into my life and even the pain that I'm experiencing now, I know that there's a purpose for it, Rudy. If you don't mind, what you're talking about is the tragedy of your son being tragically uh, random in a random shooting being killed. That's a different kind of pain. Yes. How do you deal with that? And how did you and your wife deal with that? And how do you put that together with what God's doing in your life? I think the first words out of our mouths was, or out of my wife's mouth was, I don't understand, nor do I want to understand. I know that there's a purpose. It doesn't make sense to me. Our son was 26 years old. Great kid. Senseless murder. But we're trusting. Uh, Lamentations 3 and 22, 23 says, through his mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions failed not. They're new every day. Great is his faithfulness. Even though we're going through this pain, we're not suffering unto bloodshed. We're not in a place where we're going into a deep depression. We're not alone. We're trusting God. We're encouraging each other each and every day. We're being sensitive to one another. And it's brought us to a place where, Lord, you're God. We're not. We're going to trust you in this process. It hurts, Rudy. The pain is tough, it's real, but in the pain, it's drawn us closer to Christ because there's nothing else that we can really depend on. There's no one else we can really depend on. How do you feel about the people that committed this crime? We're not exactly sure where they are with the case. Uh, my wife and I are not going to sit by and not allow or not continue to pursue um, some answers about it. But as far as how we feel towards those people, I, I would like to say that my wife and I are at a place of forgiveness. And I hope that we are, and I kind of feel that we are, but I'm uncertain. I'm, I'm just being transparent. I'm uncertain. I know my wife is quick to forgive. I'm learning to be quick to forgive, but I also have a 23-year-old son who we're not sure whether he knows the Lord or not, who is angry. And so we're doing our best to lead him in the way of Christ and to support him and trust the process, but to just honestly answer your question, as for me, I would like to believe that I'm going to forgive and be ready to forgive, but I'm not certain. Is that a fair I answer? Think, I think that's an absolutely honest answer. You know, the irony of it is that you deal with men and try to give hope and encouragement to men and men of valor who have committed some of these kinds of crimes. And here you are trying to redeem them and help them and put them back into the world. It's an interesting, you know, sort of mix to have to be involved in. Yes, sir. It is. Hasn't darkened you in any way? Do, can you still give your heart and soul to those men, even though there are victims in their lives? More so than ever. More so than ever, because we have men here of all ages and... Our greatest desire here at Men of Valor is for a guy to have an independent relationship with Jesus Christ. We want them to have an intimate and personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the heartbeat of this ministry. But, you know, maybe in what we do here for the Lord might save someone else's life, you know, because we're planting seeds. We're leading men to Christ. We're walking with men and encouraging them and showing them the love of Christ. And I do truly believe that that's impacting men's lives. And I'm trusting that what Jesus is doing here on this ministry is not just going to impact the men's lives here, but their families, everybody that they come in contact with, and even farther down the line and generations to come. So I, all we can do is trust the Lord. I've always loved the statement that God can't use a man greatly unless he has gone through great pain. 
and that pain has made you deeper. And I, I know it's so tragic with your son, but I think you will have an even more powerful ministry in Knoxville. Can you sense that? My prayer uh, when I found out I was going to Knoxville was a prayer out of Hebrews. I believe it's in uh, chapter 13. And it says, um, to equip me to do your will and to produce in me every good thing through Jesus Christ that pleases you. And I know that there's preparation seasons. I can't uh, describe or design for myself what that should look like. Only thing I can do is walk in what the Lord has for me and trust that he is preparing me for the season to come. Well, a year ago, we started this program and called Put a Word on It, and uh, you did it at that time. A year later, if I ask you uh, to put a word on it, what would that be? Right now in this season, Rudy, I'm going to go back to Lamentations. I know that through his mercies that I'm that we're not consumed. I, I, could, I could really be at a deep, dark place right now, but because of his mercies, it's not eating at me. The pain is not consuming me in a way where I'm just ready to give up. You know, his mercies are new every day, every day. So with that, I can wake up every morning and say, thank you, Jesus, because I'm awake, because I have breath in my lungs. There's a purpose for AC today. Use me as you will. Great is your faithfulness. Mercies is your word. Yes, sir. And I watched your face transform as you said that. And that twinkle came back in your eye and the smile on your face. You're a man of God, AC. God bless you. God bless you too, Rudy. Well, let me put a word on it. Mercies, that's powerful. I still feel the emotion of that conversation. You just saw his face. I don't know how I would react. I thought the fact that he talked openly about the fact that he's battling. He still is not sure exactly where he is about his forgiveness and, and, and forgiving the people that did this tragic thing. I, I can understand that. I would feel that way. But you can see the determination in his eyes. He's going to be a powerful influence there in Knoxville with a different insight than he even had before he went there now on these men that he's working with. In many cases, they may have done something just as tragically as happened to his son. How does he deal with that? Well, now he has that in his heart, and that makes him an even deeper man to be used by God. Thanks for joining us. Let's uh, join us again next time as we put a word on it.